Hi friends, I am Dr. Sri Lakshmi. I am here to discuss about the neck space infection. This is a very important topic in END for uh, theory as well as MCQ examinations. So let's start with the topic. You know about the boundaries of neck, right? So anteriorly neck is bounded by lower portion of mandible above and the manubrium and clavicle below. Posteriorly, it is bounded by superior nuchal line in the occipital bone above to the intervertebral disc between C7 the vertebrae and T1 vertebrae. Okay, between C7 and T1 vertebrae, there is an intervertebral disc. So, posteriorly, it extends up to this disc. Okay, so the short, this is a very short area. You can see it is covered by skin, superficial fascia of neck and uh, platysma then the deep cervical fascia so all the structures of neck is enclosed within these layers okay so as to uh, know about the neck space infection we have to know in detail about the deep cervical fascia anatomy okay deep cervical fascia has three layers the investing layer the pretracheal layer and the prevertebral layer okay these three are the main layers so carotid sheath is derived from all these three layers okay now we will see a horizontal cut section of the neck and I have labeled all the uh, fascias, all the layers for you. The investing layer which covers the sternocleidomastoid and trapezius. See this, uh, you got an orientation about this picture, right? This anterior portion is marked above and the top post portion, okay? And posterior portion is marked below in the lowermost portion, okay? The bottom portion, okay? So, sternocleidomastoid is uh, and, and trapezius both are covered by the investing layer of deep cervical fascia. Okay, then behind that you can see the pretracheal layer. It covers the thyroid gland. So that structure, butterfly shaped gland, is thyroid gland. Then, then comes the trachea and pharynx. So uh, we can see buccopharyngeal fascia which covers the pharynx. It is a part of pretracheal fascia only, okay. So, buccopharyngeal fascia covers the pharynx. It, it, we can know it from the name itself, okay. Then, the prevertebral layer, it covers the vertebrae and all the muscles attached to it. It encloses all these structures. And prevertebral layer and uh, an alar layer is also marked in orange color. So, prevertebral layer is a, uh, it gives off another layer called this alar fascia, okay. So, alar fascia is a branch of prevertebral layer. Now, we will see this here over here, it is carotid sheath, that brown colored fascia, that is carotid sheath. I have already mentioned that carotid sheath is derived from investing layer, pretracheal layer and prevertebral layer. All these three layers forms a carotid sheath and carotid sheath encloses most important structures of the neck like common carotid artery, internal jugular vein and vagus nerve. So, within the carotid sheath, you can see internal jugular vein, common carotid artery and vagus nerve. See, I have marked four different nerves over here. The uh, yellow colored ones, the A, B, C and D, four different nerves. We have to know how to identify these nerves because it has been repeatedly asked for MCQ examinations. Okay. So, the nerve marked A, it is located within the carotid sheath. So, what is, what is that nerve? Vagus nerve. Vagus nerve is located within the carotid sheath. So, A is vagus. Okay. C is located. C. See. Uh, C is located just behind the posterior wall of carotid sheath. So, that nerve is called sympathetic chain. Okay. Uh, then B and D. E, both of these, uh, both these nerves are located within the prevertebral fascia. It is enclosed by the prevertebral fascia. Okay. But this, these two nerves are separated by a muscle in between. That muscle is scalenus anterior. Okay. The nerve which is lying anterior to scalenus anterior. That is B. It is phrenic nerve. Okay. Then which is lying posterior to the scalenus anterior is D. Or spinal nerve. Okay. D is spinal nerve. So, you are clear with this picture now. We will see one by one all the layers. Okay. First layer is investing layer of deep cervical fascia. It encloses two muscles, two spaces and two glands. Okay. The two muscles are sternocleidomastoid. I have labeled it there for you and trapezius. Okay. And the two spaces, look at me. The, the two spaces are suprasternal space of burn above the sternum and supraclavicular space. 
these two are the spaces enclosed by investing layer of deep cervical fascia it also forms a capsule of two glands the parotid and submandibular gland now coming to the second layer it is pretracheal layer pretracheal layer encloses thyroid and infrahyoid muscles okay the thyroid gland and the infrahyoid muscles and it also forms a suspensory ligament of berry okay it what what is the suspensory ligament of berry attaches to it attaches the thyroid gland to cricoid cartilage okay it, you have to uh, remember please note that it is thyroid gland to cricoid cartilage not thyroid cartilage okay now due to this suspensory ligament of berry only the thyroid gland moves with deglutition okay so that is all about pretracheal layer and uh, layer of uh pretracheal layer is buccopharyngeal fascia it is a part of pretracheal layer and buccopharyngeal fascia covers the pharynx see pharynx okay it covers the superior middle and inferior constrictors of pharynx and the esophagus a uh, small por some portion of esophagus okay so that is all about buccopharyngeal fascia okay then the third layer is prevertebral layer okay it covers the vertebra and all the muscles attached to it the prevertebral muscles it also forms axillary sheath i have a question here for you what are the contents of axillary sheath axillary sheath uh, contains axillary artery and brachial plexus you have to remember that axillary vein is located outside the axillary sheath it is not within the axillary sheath this has been asked previously for questions okay then alar fascia it is a layer of prevertebral fascia it originates from the prevertebral fascia and fuses with the buccopharyngeal fascia below okay so that's all about the main layers of uh, deep cervical fascia now we'll come to the carotid sheath carotid sheath i have marked with a pink color over here okay this is the carotid sheath we already discussed that it is derived from investing layer pretracheal and prevertebral layer and it contains three major structures internal jugular vein which is marked in blue color then common carotid artery which is marked in red color and the uh, vagus nerve which is marked with there in the uh, yellow color okay there is another nerve which is marked just lying posterior to the carotid sheath outside the carotid sheath that is yes it is the sympathetic chain okay now uh, there is another important point that the carotid sheath fuses with the adventitia of uh, aorta in the superior mediastinum it continues down and fuses with the adventitia of aorta so this acts as uh, this has acts as a pathway for the spread of infections from the neck spaces to mediastinum okay so it is called the lincoln highway of neck okay now this is the danger area of neck this is again a vertical diagram see a cut section like this okay the cut section is like this and the vertical diagram uh, shows the vertebral bodies and the prevertebral fascia covering the vertebral bodies and the space in between is called the prevertebral space okay then anal fascia you can see clearly that anal fascia is derived from the prevertebral fascia down below it is fusing with the buccopharyngeal fascia buccopharyngeal fascia is marked in the green color over here okay so there is a potential space between alar fascia and the prevertebral fascia that area is called danger area of neck okay and the area between retropharyngeal uh, sorry buccopharyngeal fascia and alar fascia okay that is marked in green color over here that space is called retropharyngeal space retropharyngeal space is between buccopharyngeal fascia and alar fascia okay now in detail about the spaces of neck okay see behind the prevertebral fascia and vertebral body okay this is the prevertebral space the pink colored one it is between prevertebral fascia and the vertebrae okay and between buccopharyngeal fascia and prevertebral fascia between these two fascia green colored space that is retropharyngeal space okay now we can see the peritonsillar space see it is located between the tonsil and the superior constrictor of pharynx okay understood so these three main spaces uh, prevertebral space retropharyngeal space and the peritonsillar space okay now we have to see the space here it is parapharyngeal space it is located lateral to the, all these structures okay all these spaces this parapharyngeal space 
it is bounded by carot uh, parotid and ramus of mandible with the pterygoid muscles attached to it laterally and the superior constrictor and tonsils medially okay this potential space between uh, these two medial and lateral boundaries are is parapharyngeal space and it is a pyramidal inverted pyramidal in shape okay we'll come to uh, in details of all these spaces one by one before that we'll just have an orientation okay i've marked a b c and d so just revise a is prevertebral space it is between prevertebral fascia and vertebra okay then b is retropharyngeal space it is between prevertebral fascia and buccopharyngeal fascia okay then c is peritonsillar space it is between tonsil and superior constrictor of pharynx okay and the d is paravertebral space parapharyngeal space that is located lateral to all these spaces okay d is parapharyngeal space okay now retropharyngeal space of gullet okay we have already discussed retropharyngeal space is located between the prevertebral fascia and buccopharyngeal fascia okay and there is a median attachment a central attachment which divides the retropharyngeal space into right and left okay right and left okay now the content of retropharyngeal space is retropharyngeal node of ruvier okay retropharyngeal node of ruvier look at the spelling ruvier okay retropharyngeal node of ruvier okay and uh, an abscess in this area acute retropharyngeal abscess is usually uh, it's seen in the posterior pharyngeal wall and it's usually one side the right or left either right or left okay so uh, an abscess in the posterior pharyngeal wall which is one sided is an uh, retropharyngeal abscess okay uh, so to diagnose uh, we have to take an x-ray uh, x-ray of the neck lateral view and we have to see the retropharyngeal space if it is more than 7 mm it is suggestive of retropharyngeal abscess and the retrotracheal space more than 14 mm in children or more than 22 mm in adult or more than half the width of corresponding vertebral body is suggestive of retropharyngeal abscess okay understood now the treatment of acute retropharyngeal abscess so uh, in the early cellulitis stage treatment is iv antibiotics and uh, when the abscess develop we have to do an incision and drainage incision is put via oral cavity and uh, external neck incision can also be put that approach is called dean's approach okay Ex uh, here uh, intraorally is the most common practice and external neck incision can also be put okay so that is all about acute uh, retropharyngeal abscess now the prevertebral abscess prevertebral abscess is located in the prevertebral space behind the prevertebral fascia okay the red colored one okay then we can see that only one prevertebral abscess is there there is no right and left okay so the abscess is located in the posterior pharyngeal wall and abscess will be midline this is how we can differentiate retropharyngeal abscess and uh, prevertebral abscess Prevertebral abscess is midline and retropharyngeal abscess is one sided, right or left. Okay, that is all about prevertebral abscess. Now, the most important space, it's most confusing also. This is the parapharyngeal space. Okay, we'll make it interesting because uh, parapharyngeal space is a pyramidal shape, it is an inverted pyramid. Imagine an inverted pyramid, and the base of the pyramid is formed by the skull bone. Okay skull bone the skull base forms the base of the pyramid okay the apex of the pyramid lies at the uh, um, corner of hyoid okay and it is bound laterally and medially by structures of the neck okay laterally it is bound by see parapharyngeal uh, space this is a actually a horizontal cut section okay horizontal cut section so in that we can see laterally it is bound by deep lobe of parotid and ramus of mandible and pterygoid muscles attached to it okay medially it is bound by tonsil and superior constrictor of pharynx okay so this these are the lateral and medial boundaries lateral boundaries parotid and ramus of mandible with the pterygoid muscles okay then medially tonsils and superior constrictor of pharynx so i hope you got an idea about parapharyngeal space and the abscess uh, before that we will see the styloid apparatus separates parapharyngeal space into two compartments pre styloid and post styloid okay the pre styloid compartment contains adipose tissue lymph node ascending palatine and pharyngeal arches also uh, uh, arteries also okay 
then the post siloid compartment contains all the last four cranial nerves 9 10 11 12 cranial nerves then carotid sheath and its contents see i have marked the carotid sheath uh, it's a schematic representation only don't worry about the aesthetic beauty of the image so that is carotid sheath with the contents internal carotid artery and uh, internal jugular vein and vagus nerve and uh, 9th cranial nerve 11th and 12th cranial nerve is located outside the uh, sheath and there is also sympathetic vein which is located posterior to the uh, carotid sheath okay so these are the contents of uh, the post siloid compartment of yes parapharyngeal space now the parapharyngeal abscess we can we already know that it is located in the lateral pharyngeal wall okay so parapharyngeal abscess is located in the lateral pharyngeal wall and so it when you look at the mouth into the mouth we, we can see uh, the abscess is present behind the posterior pillar of tonsil so parapharyngeal abscess is located behind the tonsil and the tonsil is not infected tonsil is normal okay not congested okay but it is pushed medially and anteriorly by the abscess okay but here uvula is normal okay understood this is how parapharyngeal abscess looks like now when we study about peritonsillar abscess we should know how to clearly differentiate between parapharyngeal and peritonsillar abscess parapharyngeal abscess is located behind the tonsil okay parapharyngeal abscess is located uh, posterior to the posterior pillar of tonsil okay and tonsil is not contested here okay but it is pushed anteriorly and medially and uvula is normal here okay then treatment is parapharyngeal abscess always have to be drained by making an external neck incision okay this incision can be a transverse incision which is two finger breadth inferior to the angle of mandible okay and also uh, Mosher's t-shaped incision which is uh, given in the image below can also be put okay this is all about parapharyngeal abscess okay now the next topic is submandibular space submandibular space communicates on both sides right and left communicate with each other okay and the mylohyoid muscle located over here divides the submandibular space into two spaces sublingual and submylohyoid okay so uh, and the submandibular abscess is known as ludwig's angina remember uh, the misnomer Ludwig's angina does not have any relationship with the uh, angina pectoris it is an abscess but this abscess is in textbooks it is mentioned as woody hard abscess okay it is tense and indurated with no fluctuation so we have to search for these keywords from the question so it is a tense indurated non fluctuating abscess okay so it's called Ludwig's angina mostly it spreads from the in dental infections okay in order to train uh, in order to drain this abscess uh, Ludwig's angina you have to put an incision along the mandibular arch okay and uh, when we put an incision here we can reach uh, it to the mylohyoid and the mylohyoid is split in order to drain the entire abscess okay see mylohyoid is split to drain the abscess now the last topic is peritonsillar abscess peritonsillar abscess or otherwise known as quincy so peritonsillar space is located between see that orange colored one is a peritonsillar space it is located between tonsil and the superior constrictor of pharynx okay so uh, peritonsillar abscess spreads from the tonsil itself so in cases of acute tonsillitis and all the, the port of entry of infection is through the crypt of uh, tonsil and it can lead to an intratonsillar abscess at first and then it becomes a peritonsillar abscess usually peritonsillar abscess are unilateral okay it is either uh, to right or left okay not bilateral okay uh, so on examination see i have already told you peritonsillar abscess have to be differentiated from parapharyngeal abscess in peritonsillar abscess tonsil is congested okay and it is pushed medially uh, by the uh, abscess which is located andro to superior to the pons, uh, tonsil okay and the uvula is also pushed to the opposite side and here jugular digastric nodes are also present okay so uh, to differentiate from uh, parapharyngeal abscess uh, in parapharyngeal abscess tonsil is not congested here tonsil is congested in parapharyngeal abscess 
uh, abscess is located posterior to the tonsil. Okay, here it is andro superior to tonsil. Okay, there uvula is in normal position. Here uvula is pushed to the opposite side. Okay, so now coming to the treatment again in earlier stages IV antibiotic when the abscess is formed you have to drain the abscess by putting an incision through the intraoral route okay through via oral route only we can drain this abscess uh, so parapharyngeal abscess is drained only through the external neck incision but uh, peri, uh, peritonsillar abscess is drained only through intraoral route so most common site of putting the incision is the most prominent site of bulge okay most at the most prominent site of bulge an incision can be put and uh, we have to give IV antibiotics incision and drainage and tonsillectomy has to be per, uh, performed but not a hot tons, uh, tonsillectomy not in the acute setting we have to wait for six weeks and an interval tonsillectomy is performed after six weeks okay so that's all about the abscesses uh, to revise we have uh, studied five abscesses mainly First one is acute retropharyngeal and prevertebral. To differentiate the, these two, uh, prevertebral abscess is midline. Acute retropharyngeal abscess is either to one side, okay, right or left, okay. Then peritonsillar and parapharyngeal. Peritonsillar is located andro superior to tonsil and tonsil is congested and uvula is also shifted, okay, to the opposite side. Parapharyngeal abscess is located in the lateral pharyngeal wall behind the tonsil okay behind the tonsil and the tonsil is pushed anteriorly and medially andromedially okay anteriorly and medially and uvula is not uh, ovula is not pushed to the opposite side here uvula is normal and tonsil is also not congested okay so and we have the woody heart swelling in the uh, floor of mouth that is twin uh, ludwig's angina okay quincy is peritonsillar abscess we have another reporting uh, we have discussed here the space of gillet is it is retropharyngeal space okay this is all about now we'll have a discussion on a uh, we'll have a question okay uh, young male uh, with uh, history of tooth extraction has come to opd you have seen a swelling in the upper part of the neck and you have seen the tonsil is pushed to the medial side and tonsil is not congested what is this tonsil is not congested but put to the medial side an abscess in the upper part of the uh, neck along the sternocleidomastoid mustard and history of tooth extraction okay so this is the parapharyngeal abscess i hope you got the concepts clear and the question right please subscribe to this channel and we'll come up with new videos thank you